Greetings for the day. I, Dr. Alka Singh, from Shiran Sarup Memorial University, Barabanki, Uttar Pradesh, welcome you all to the second part of lecture on forfeiting. In my previous lecture, I have discussed about factoring, and in this lecture, I will be discussing about forfeiting, difference between factoring and forfeiting, and bill discounting. So let's start with forfeiting. What is forfeiting? When we talk about forfeiting, it is derived from French word a forfeit, which means surrender of rights. Forfeiting is a mechanism by which the right of export receivables of an exporter, that means client, is purchased by the financial intermediaries, that means forfeiter, without recourse of export. The characteristics of the forfeiting transactions are credit is extended to the importer for the period of between 180 days to 7 years. The minimum bill size is normally rupees 5 lakh is preferred. The payment is normally receivable in any major convertible currency. A letter of credit or a guarantee is made by bank usually in the importer's country. The contract can be for either goods or services. Forfeiting is a method of getting payment for exports by the exporter. The forfeiting agency discounts trade receivable of the exporter without any recourse to exporter. In the event of the buyer not paying for the transaction. Trade receivables includes bill of exchange, promissory notes, book receivables and deferred payments under the letter of credit. For a long time, forfeiting was unknown to India. Export Credit Guarantee Corporation was guaranteeing commercial bank against exporters export finance. However, with the setting up of Export-Import Bank since 1994, forfeiting is available on liberalized basis. Export-Import Bank of India, Exim Bank, which is also known, acts as a facilitator and the nodal agency. Forfeiting by converting the exporter's credit sale into cash sale, the forfeiter protect exporter from all the risk associated with selling overseas on credit. When we talk about forfeiting, forfeiting is a mechanism of financing export which is available by the discounting export receivables which is proved or we can say evidenced by bill of exchange or promissory notes without recourse to the seller or exporter means it will not impact to the exporter it operates or you can say work on a fixed rate basis which is called discount and also available or obtained up to 100% of contract value when we talk about process of forfeiting, as you can see in the diagram also, forfeiter and exporter agreed upon a forfeiting agreement. Before any contract, first there is a process where forfeiter and exporter agrees upon the forfeiting agreement. That is point number one. Then sale contract has been signed between exporter and importer. Because exporter has to sell the goods to the importer, so there should be sale contract in between the exporter and importer. That is point number two. Then exporter sells or supply the goods. Shipment is initiated by the exporter. That is point number three. Then the importer obtain a guarantee from his bank. Meanwhile, bank guarantees to the impo uh, importer. Uh, it may be promissory note letter of credit 
in the form of ex promissory note or letter of credit that is point number 4 then exporter gives document to the forfeiter now here point number 5 to point number 6 that document is passed from importer to exporter and exporter to the forfeiter then forfeiter controls the document pays for them as indicates on the forfeiting agreement that is point number 7 now here exporter gets the payment after the discount uh, then forfeiter presents document to the bank at maturity date when maturity period comes then that document is sent to the bank by the forfeiter which is point number 9 then importer pays to the bank to at maturity date and finally bank pays to forfeiter at maturity date this is the process complete process of forfeiting now we will talk about the essential requisites of forfeiting transactions first of all exporter to extend credit to customer for period above six months then Exporter to raise bill of exchange covering deferred receivable from 6 months to 5 years. There is another requisite like repayment of debt will have to be guaranteed by another bank unless the exporter is a government agency or a multinational company. One more essential requisite for forfeiting is co-acceptance acts as the yardstick for the forfeiter to credit quality and marketability of instruments accepted uh, after discussing uh, requisites we will discuss with the benefits of forfeiting it provides immediate funds to the exporter who is saved from the risk of defaulting importer Actually, when a forfeiter uh, purchases the exporter's bill, their exporter's default, uh, any type of risk is minimized. It is an earning to commercial bank who by taking the bill of highly valued currency can gain on the appreciation of currencies the forfeiter can also discount these bills in the foreign market to meet more demands of the exporters forfeiter can further discount bills in the foreign market to meet other demands of the exporters there is very little risk for the forfeiter as both importer bank and exporter banks are involved in other words forfeiter is at less risk as both importer and exporter banks are involved letter of credit plays a major role for the forfeiter forfeiter agreements with the exporter on his terms and condition and risk is covered by separate charges as forfeiting provides 100 percent finance to exporter against his export he can concentrate on his other exports it for when we talk about forfeiting it also has drawbacks like forfeiting is not available for deferred payment especially while exporting capital goods for which payment will be made on a deferred basis by the importer here international factoring deals with receivables related to deferred payment export then there is discrimination between western countries and the countries in the uh, southern hemisphere which are mostly underdeveloped uh, in other words discrimination is bit is uh, uh, seen between underdeveloped countries and developed western countries there is no international credit agency which can guarantee for forfeiting companies 
which affects long term for fitting business and last drawback only selected currencies are taken for forfeiting as they alone enjoy international liquidity uh, after forfeiting and factoring now we'll come to the difference between factoring and forfeiting as i have discussed in my first part factoring uh, and in second part forfeiting now i am definitely going to tell difference first basis is availability of finance in factoring 80% of value of invoice in some cases it is 100% also but in forfeiting it is 100% of invoice value second basis is credit rating or credit worthiness factor does the credit rating in case of non recourse factoring transaction and in forfeiting forfeiting bank rely on the cred credibility of the availing bank service or we can say service provided or for the first we'll discuss about the sales it is in the factoring it is by tenure uh, and uh, in the forfeiting it is by bills then we will talk about the records in factoring with or without records and forfeiting it is always without records and we when we talk about service provided in factoring day to day administration of sale and other allied services but in forfeiting no services are provided as i have discussed about factoring and forfeiting now we can give the comparative analysis or chart between bills discounted factoring and forfeiting uh, basis for the all three points first i will do scrutiny or we can say inspection in bill discounting individual sale transaction is considered while in factoring service of sale transaction is considered and in forfeiting transaction of service of transaction service of sale transaction in an individual sale transaction both are considered availability of finance or extent of finance in bill discounting it is up to 75 to 80% in factoring it is up to 80% and in forfeiting it is 100% when we compare records bill discounting or bill discount it is always with records factoring it is with or without records and forfeiting it is always without records when we talk about administration uh, bill discounting is always uh, it not required sale administration factoring is uh, important is here sale administration is important for the factoring when again for the forfeiting there is no need of sales administration when we talk about term bill discounting is short term factoring is also short term but forfeiting is medium term and last point for the uh, comparative chart it is charge creation bill discounting is always hypothetically presented and uh, factoring is assigned and forfeiting is also assigned in today's lecture i have discussed about forfeiting difference between factoring and forfeiting comparative analysis between factoring bill discounting and forfeiting my lecture is divided into two parts first part covers factoring and second part covers forfeiting so i hope you understood today's topic well which was related to forfeiting and if you want to learn about factoring so, so watch part 1 of factoring and forfeiting till next video thank you so much